Greetings sculptors and welcome to the studio. Today we are going to be talking about sculpting animals. This video will be the first in a series of demonstrations that I'm going to do uh, sculpting a cheetah. In this first video I'm going to talk about uh, research and coming up with an idea, um, working with a, a subject that is a little bit more challenging uh, than a human in the sense that it doesn't listen to directions and um, does whatever it wants. Um, we don't have direct access to it. So it's a little different than working with a model on the stand who you can ask to pose. So we'll talk about some of that stuff. Uh, and then uh, after we've sort of gone over the research and coming up with the pose, um, I'm going to show you how to make the initial armature for that. All right, uh, and uh, like I said, this is the first in a series of those and later on I will uh, we will go over massing out the form, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I have no idea how many videos this will take, um, but you know, try to take it all the way to the end. All right, so um, uh, I'll go over the uh, the materials that we need um, when it's when it's time to do that. But first, I want to talk about uh, I want to I want to talk about coming up with the pose. All right, so um, uh, as you can see here, I have this little tiny gesture sketch. All right, very, very similar to the gesture sketches that I do. Uh, if you've seen my videos on gesture sketching the human uh, or the, you know, the human figure, uh, it's the same set of principles and ideas and utilizing all the same type of techniques. So if you want, you can go take a look at those. Um, I'm not able to shoot and film uh, at the zoo. Uh, this was done at the Roger Williams Zoo in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, which is uh, close to, my, to where I live. Okay, um, and uh, thank you to the Roger Williams Zoo for let, allowing me to bring uh, my, my clay and my tools and my entire sculpture class for a whole really fun day of, uh, of animal sculpting. Right, um, so, uh, so this was done from life and, uh, and it's, it's a gesture sketch. And just like a gesture sketch of a human, it's, it's not perfect. Right? It's, it's looking to kind of capture some of the motion. Um, I can tell you that uh, um, you know, watching the cheetahs walk around in the pen and sometimes they run a little bit and they play with each other a little bit and then they jump up on the rock and just sit there for, you know, a long period of time, um, that it's, it's not perfect, right? It captures a little bit of the feeling of, of, of the animal, but, um, but uh, the, the, the walk cycle is not quite right. I'm not entirely certain it, whether the cheetah is kind of walking or kind of trotting. Um, uh, it's definitely not running. Um, and that's important because um, in terms of the sculpture that I want to do, uh, I want to do a really awesome dynamic cheetah running, chasing, chasing after an antelope, like, and, you know, you know the, those really cool images, and we're going to talk about those images in a little bit, of, uh, of, 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 of cheetahs like running, and it's like all kind of sideways, and you know, it's is coming way down and you know its back end is sort of like lifted up and it's kind of compressed and you get that long tail um so that, that's the one i want to do and i can tell you that spending time at at the zoo uh the cheetah never did that i never got to see that version but whenever i go online and i look up images of cheetahs those are always the ones that pop up first right so as a sculptor i want to do something that's dynamic and interesting you know i don't want to just do the cheetah walking around in the pen um, because that's not as dynamic or as visually interesting to me. And we all know if you are watching the cheetahs, if they're just kind of standing and walking around, they're really cool and you're watching them and it's, it's great and everything, but it, when they do run a little bit, everybody gets excited, right? So it's a little indication of why we want to sculpt that instead. <clears throat> so um, that, all that being said, I have a little bit of an idea of the cheetah that I'm looking for. Um, I have some direct observations here, right? And so, you know, in terms of the process, you know, you have a little bit of an idea what you want to do, but then it, it all has to, it has to start from life, right? Everything is always going to be stale if it starts from photographs, right? There's nothing wrong with photographs. Photographs are wonderful and everything, but they don't offer the same things that real life observation offer, right? So, so for me, it, the first thing I did, and, you know, even though I'm starting this video here, I actually started this video last weekend when I went, when I took my class to the zoo, right? So the, the research started in advance, and it actually even started before that because uh, I asked my wife, uh, um, I asked my wife to pick out, so I, I assigned my class to go to the list of animals at the zoo and to pick out their animals, right? Um, or to go and, and look at the ones that they were interested in. And so I asked my wife to pick out my animal, animal for me, and she went to it and she was like, oh, I want you to sculpt the cheetah. 
I'm like, okay, so that's the one. So I, I walked into the zoo knowing that that was what I wanted to do. So there's a little bit of that sort of idea. And then I spent time, uh, this was done over a couple of hours, you know, just watching them walk around, observing them. Uh, the cheetahs were rather interesting because uh, when I got there, they were, they were fairly active in the morning. Uh, and there are four of them in the pen. I, I, the zoo can correct me on this. I, 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 I thought that there was one male that was larger and three females, but I, I could be totally wrong because I never saw them all together. Right? There are four of them in there, I, I think. Um, and so, um, uh, so I, I, I got there and I, I watched them. And somewhere around maybe, it was probably around 11.30, somewhere between 11.30 and 12 o'clock, all the cheetahs just laid down and took a nap. By themselves, all, all together. They, they kind of went into different places and they kind of hid and is all you would see is their tail. And they slept for a good solid hour, I would imagine. I walked around and checked in on all, all my students and um, and came back and they were still sleeping and you know just was kind of messing around with some of the anatomy on this uh, from an anatomy chart that I had. And, um, and then all of a sudden they all woke up together. You know, like an, an hour or an hour and a half later. I thought that was just rather interesting and a good example of how when you are working with, with with subjects like this, um, how they don't they don't play nice. You know, when you, when you hire a model to come to your studio and pose, you, you know, you ask the model to do this, and the model does that to the best of their ability, and it's great. You know, <laughs> so um, but you know, if you're sculpting your pet um, or your um, or, or some, an animal at the zoo or or just anything, you know, it, it doesn't always it doesn't always play nice. So, so this is just a kind of, you know, a, a sketch, uh, and I base this sort of loosely on quarter scale measurements. So I have some, uh, in terms of my measurements, uh, I went online, went to Wikipedia and looked up, you know, sizing of cheetahs. Uh, I know that my, I, these are my notes down here, um, uh, the overall length of a cheetah is, um, the average is uh, 3 foot 7 inches to 4 11, right? So the cheetah I'm doing is running and hunting. And um, my understanding of cheetahs is that a lot of the times when you see the hunting going on, it's the females. So the females were a little bit smaller. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to do my cheetah um, at about uh, 40 inches. All right. Um, oh wait, maybe is that is that right? Is that right? I want it to be about four feet long. So 48 in, uh, so 48 inches. So they should be about uh, 18 inches long. All right. Oh, oh. So I'm sorry. Let me. There. So this one was about a quarter, uh, quarter scale. So the one that I'm going to sculpt for you is going to be about a uh, a third scale. All right. And I'm going to say about because if we were doing a third scale sculpt, like so, some of these are third scales behind me, I can tell you that um, that, that that if you go and you measure um, Allison, who is the model for this, um, you know, this is exactly a third scale of her. Right? When I'm sculpting a cheetah, that's a it's a kind of amalgamation of a, or a sort of you know an average of a bunch of them. Uh, I you know I I'm taking a bit of a guess as to what the the, the one third is, but I'm still going to try to work with the math because it's going to help me. And I'm going to use this one, which is about a quarter scale. I actually remeasured it, and um, uh, it sort of must have gotten away from me a little bit. I started thinking that, but it's actually a little bit small. So this would actually, if it was a quarter scale, would be a very small scale um, cheetah. But if it's a fifth scale, maybe it's a large, you know, so it doesn't matter now, right? And then its average shoulder height uh, is between 26 and 37 inches, right? So 26 and 37 inches. Um, so the one I'm going to do, I, I just sort of took a guess somewhere in the middle is going to be about 30. So it's going to be about 10 inches. So that's going to be the length of uh, really, really what it is. It's uh, one of my legs that I want is going to be really kind of straight and dynamic like this. So it'll really give me the length of from the bottom of its paw to the top of its shoulder blade, right? So that gives me some initial sort of math to, to sort of work from, all right? So let's let's go a little further into the research and researching these animals. Um, you know, we're doing visual research, right? So the first thing we did is, you know, um, we went to the zoo, you know, uh, the, you know, I'm sorry, I, the first thing I did is I, I went to the zoo and I observed, right, I watched. You know, part of doing, you're sculpting there and you're kind of making something, but really what you're doing is you're spending two or three hours with these animals, just watching them move around. You're, watch, you're, you're seeing all kinds of things. So as they walk, the way their scapula kind of come up and down. And you can watch video of that, but it's not the same. It's not the same. You know, you're watching the kind of the angles of their hips as they move, the flatness of it and, and all of that. 
Right? So that's, that's where we start is from life and nature. Right? The next bit of research that I really think that we need to do is we need to, uh, we need to start collecting up some, uh, um, uh, some materials on our computer. Or our, I don't recommend working on your phone. If you have, that, that, it's, it's too small, right? an iPad, but you know, whatever kind of computer screen you have. Right? And you want to go online and you want to find whatever animal it is. It doesn't matter if you're, um, I sculpted a tortoise recently. Um, I have a folder on my computer of, to, you know, called tortoise. Right? Um, uh, I talk, let, me, let me talk a little bit about my file, file management. Um, you know, on my computer, I have a folder right? and it's called, um, it's called Sculpture Research. And if you go into Sculpture Research, um, it says, there's another folder that says people and animals. And if you click on people, um, uh, the photographic research that I've collected of various models. So when I work on poses like this, I always sculpt from life initially, but I, I collect uh, rounds of photos as well of those models. And so, you know, all the models are in there by name, um, whether it's things that I've posed for or, or, or a particular model, and then you could go in there and they're broken up into different categories. So, um, so if you go into sculpture research and you select animals, you'll see the different animals that I've collected and, and different photos, uh, that I've collected. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a really good solid skeletal uh, skeleton, um, you know, chart or image or whatever. You know, depending on certain animals. If you, um, you know, if you look, at, if you're sculpting a dog, there's there's a lot of stuff about dog skeletons. Some of the more, you know, if you're doing a um, a jackrabbit, there's not quite as much as there is for a dog. Um, so if you're doing lions, there's a lot of stuff about lions. Um, there's not as much stuff about uh, anteaters, right? Um, although the anteater at the zoo is very cool and made an awesome sculpt. Um, right? So, so, you, but you you will be able to find some skeletal information on 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 just about any animal that I can think of. But some are going to have more, and some are going to have less. Also, you want to make sure that your your skeletal image is is uh, is naturalistic and representational. Uh, a photograph of the skeleton, sometimes you can get that, you know, if, um, if different museums might have a, a, a collection of, bone, of, of skeletons of animals, you might get, get actual photographs, those can be helpful. Sometimes you're gonna get charts that identify things. Um, sometimes you're gonna find people's weird, quirky drawings. That is not what you wanna work on. You don't wanna work from somebody's, somebody else's interpretation. You wanna work from an actual chart, you know. Um, uh, the second one you're going to want is uh, is a muscle chart, right? So um, there are all kinds of great resources out there. Uh, I've done some work with horse sculpting. I have uh, a horse sculpting app on my uh, our ho a horse anatomy app on my phone. I have, I have, there are several out there for people as well. On those, sometimes they'll show the the one that I that I have that I'm thinking of. I can't remember. I apologize, but um, it was it was older. But you could you could make it go transparent back and forth and see the skeleton versus the the musculature, right? which was really really sort of helpful. And you can spin it around in 3D, so you can move different things. Right? That stuff is really helpful. And we live in the 21st century. If those resources are available, we should be using them. Right? So you know, there's no such thing as as, as cheating when it comes to creating something new, right? If you're going and you're copying someone else's sculpture, I don't know, I don't know that's, that's, that's plagiarism, but it's not really cheating. It, you know, that, that, that concept is sort of you know, an odd concept. Um, and so I think that anything that you can use um, that is helpful is going to be um, you know, something that you, you might want to collect. You, know, you don't want to limit yourself as a point, right? Um, so then, all right, so now, so now we, we have our, 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 our anatomy taken care of, right? So we've, we have our initial observations, our, our gesture sketch, we have our, um, and we have our anatomy taken care of. The next thing is to go and, and for me, what I'm gonna do, now, now it would be great if, you know, maybe, maybe you do just wanna do the cheetah walking, right? And then maybe you collected that research when you were at the zoo, right? Maybe you wanted, you know, maybe the cheetahs like, like I always picture like a cheetah laying on a, on a, on a branch with like one arm kind of hanging down. You know, maybe you could, maybe you grab that photo while you were there and, and, and you have that, right? And that's where you want to sculpt from. Um, but you might want to go online, but you, you're not going to be able to have rounds of it, right? You're not going to see all of them. So you want to go and start collecting some photographic research. You, know, you do a Google image search and, you know, just start collecting it up. You know, you're not... You know, if people are posting photos online for you to look at, you're you're not stealing them. That's not 
I don't think that this is anything that's a copyright infringement if you're just using a photo that somebody posted for people to look at if you're, you're using that. Right? So you wanna collect up as many as you can. And I can tell you that what I did is I created a little folder on my computer of, I think I called it Cheetah Running. And, um, and in it, there's a whole bunch of them that are um, the, the particular part of the, of, the, of the run cycle that I'm interested in. All right, so um, so there's this one part that I have. My cheese gonna be all laying over, like I said. He's gonna he's gonna have this this paw is gonna be coming down like this, and and his hind quarters are actually I think I'm going this way. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, in my photos, I'm going this way, and his hind quarters are gonna be kind of coming all up like this, right? You know, even even doing this, this is this is super helpful for me. Like you know, sort of feel feel that bend in the spine, right? Um, you know, things that he he was not doing in the. When, when they were, they, I shouldn't even say he because I think I'm, I'm, sculpt, I'm sculpting a female cheetah in my, in my head. So um, things that she would be doing in the wild, right? The final thing, uh, and so you, you know, you're gonna have a whole bunch of those, right? And you know, you might also collect up images of your uh, your animal's head or details or, or anything, but you want to have them all in one place, right? Because you, when you're doing your sculpt, you don't want to be constantly doing image searches. You want to collect up as much as I can. Um, you might find that as you get further along, um, you didn't realize that, uh, or you don't really understand the cheetah paw, right? So then you, you know, start something new and you look up cheetah paws and you, you know, look at all the stuff on cheetah paws that you can find and then you're able to scope that. The last thing that I want to mention that I think is very helpful, um, and you can do this with video or um, animations are really great. Uh, um, I uh, am a really big fan of, uh, of an animation instructor online. His name is Aaron Blaze. Um, uh, I'll tell you a quick funny story. Uh, uh, I was on a, this was the last, the last flight I took before pandemic. I remember I was flying out to Detroit for uh, a project and, um, and I'm sitting in the airport, scrolling through Facebook or whatever, and this ad pops up that's totally random. I don't even know why, because I looked up nothing like this. And it was something like, you know, uh, Aaron Blaze's, um, like, it was a, it was a, uh, uh, it wasn't a, it might have actually even been a cheat. I didn't even think of that. Um, but it was a, a one, a run walk cycle. And it was basically an, a, like, an hour or more video of him animating the run walk cycle and it just fascinated me i watched the little preview or something and i downloaded it and um and got on an airplane and with my ipad and sat there and watched it and was just totally in love and afterwards i went out and i bought a bunch of his other course materials uh, so um yeah, it's just a funny kind of story but the but his breakdown of the run walk cycle and looking at how um you know which which is all sort of true and real right um in fact those things go back farther to um, uh, Moybridge, uh, Edward Moybridge, who um, back uh, in the early part of the 20th century, when photography was new, photographed uh, um, animals walking, right? And uh, somewhere in my studio, I don't know where, I have a book of all the animals, you know, all these photos, but you can find so many of them online. Um, if you look up Moybridge and, um, you know, whatever your animals, a lot of stuff with horses and camels and um, dogs, people, uh, and things that people didn't understand, they, 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 they revealed things that people didn't fully understand about how animals run because it's so fast, right? You can't see, you, you know, and, and that's a problem with, with paintings from, uh, from before photography. There were things that they didn't fully understand about how animals walked, right? So, you know, people who study that, people like animators, Right? They're not just capturing a, you know, a photographer captures a single image, right? Um, a sculptor creates, you know, a single sculpture of a moment in time, but an animator is responsible for, for kind of all of it, you know? And so somebody uh, um, who, you know, worked at Disney and, 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 you know, animates animals for a living is a huge, valuable resource, right? So I strongly recommend those if you can uh, find those or, you know, uh, you know, go sign up for his course if you, uh, if you can, uh, if you can afford that, right? Um, so th those are those are the things that I do uh, in terms of getting started. You know, this is this is all stuff that we that we don't talk about in the beginning of a sculpture. You know, so you, you know somebody's going to give show you a sculpture video and you'd be like, okay, and here's my armature all made and whatnot. And I'm just going to start sculpting. And you know, that's that's all well and good, but but there's a whole process that that you need to kind of go through in advance uh, in order to get ready.
All right, so that's the first part of this video. Um, uh, I'm gonna take a quick break and move some of these aside, uh, or move this aside, and then I'm gonna show you how to make the armature that we talked about. See you in a minute. Taking a break, uh, I walked around my studio and I found the Animals in Motion by um, Edward Moybridge. Uh, um, quick, look, quick couple of things. Um, uh, I was incorrect before. Uh, this, these were originally published in 1887. Um, uh, so uh, that's that. Um, you know, and there's you know 183 plates. So there's all kinds of different things in this book. Uh, so here we have horses walking, horses trotting. Um, horses cantering, leaping, um, ox moving, plates. There's a whole section on wild animals. Um, so we have lions moving, uh, deer. Uh, somewhere in here I saw sloths, <laughs> um, white-tailed gnu, uh, uh, pigeons flying, uh, all kinds of different stuff. And, and like I said, um, I have this really nice book, uh, which, is, which is great. However, um, you can find a lot of these images as well as lots of uh, you know other similar types of things um, on the internet. So, over there. All right, so uh, we're going to now get started on making the armature for the cheetah that I'm going to sculpt for you. So a uh, couple of things we need, um, and this is going to be very similar if you've seen my videos uh, on uh, on figure sculpting. Uh, it's really the same process. Right? So we're going to build a similar type of armature, but we're going to make some modifications. Uh, one of the things that uh, I say all the time about, uh, about, about sculpting animals is that for me, um, I come at animals from my, my own... The perspective that I take is that, is that animals are similar to us. And so I go to my own body in order to, uh, to understand them. So um, all, all vertebrates, you know, have you know a rib cage, pelvis, and a head. You know, we have a rib cage, pelvis, and a head. Right. So um, this animal has the has the same thing. Now, the shape of the rib cage of my rib cage is going to be different. So it's, my rib cage is going to be wider this way. Um, most animals um, that walk on four legs, their their rib cage is longer this way. Right. So, but it's but it's the same kind of thing. So they have scapula. We have scapula. They have one bone, two bones, lots of bones. We have one bone, two bones, lots of bones. Right, so uh, that's going to be the same, and, and so I'm going to use myself and my understanding of of, of the human animal um, to help me to empathize with this creature as best I can. Right, so I always try to see more similarity than dissimilarity. Right, that's a, a, a lesson that runs through all of my teaching. Right? So, um, so, so it's going to be very similar, right, uh, to to those other things. So, you know, we're going to need some wood. Right? I'm going to explain this in, while I'm doing that. Um, you're going to need uh, some screws and uh, some kind of driver, right? A screwdriver. If that's all you have is a screwdriver, that's all you have is a screwdriver, right? But um, a, a, a driver like this is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, you're going to need some black pipe, right, in order to suspend it up. So this is just the wire. Um, attached to uh, attached to the to the base, screwed into the base. But for something that's larger, the the clay is going to get heavier. We're going to need something else, and I'll explain uh, the decisions on this uh, when I get there. Uh, you're going to obviously need some wire, same wire that we use for for figure sculpting. Um, you know, go back and look at the figure sculpting videos uh, for how I clean it and um, and process it and how to buy it and everything. Um, uh, some needle nose pliers, some stuff to measure with. Uh, I'm gonna wear some gloves uh, because uh, I, I, I injured my finger pretty good. I, I, I wash this wire, but normally um, I, I don't wear, I, I don't always wear gloves, but I have this injury here and it's kind of a little bit better. Um, still gotta work on it. So, uh, so I'm gonna put this over here to the side. I'll get that out of the way. Move this, I'm gonna stand this up over here. I always like to lay my drill with this down. Side for now. Side. All right. Don't need these gloves. Okay. All right, so I got my my wood here. I've already I sanded the edges. You don't need to watch me do that. And I feel like this is the nicer of the two sides. Although this is good on both sides. Just because you know we're talking about good practice here. 
nice way. I, I like things centered and I always like to spend the time making uh, a nice armature. I'm working on a, um, uh, I'm, I'm working on a, a commission uh, over there, pointing over there. I'm working on a commission and, um, and I'm making the maquette for that and I painted them. I painted all this. I'm not going to do that for this one because it takes too much time. But, all right, I made that X on there and that just helps me to kind of line this up and make sure it's kind of even. Mm -mm. You might be asking, you know, why do you, why do you need a, why do you need a, uh, two pieces of wood? Why can't you just, um, make this first. for the record, it's supposed to make that noise. <laughs> All right, so uh, a couple things again, talking about good practice. Um, these are two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. So three quarters plus three quarters um, is an inch and a half. They're actually a smidge bit less because they're not three quarters. They're actually 23, 30 seconds. So I'm gonna shave a little off. Them. So because that, it's, that's an inch and a half, I'm using inch and a quarter screws, right? If you used um, like an inch and five eighths screw, which is a very common screw size, uh, that the screw would come up through the top. All right? You may want to make sure, and I know some of you have heard this before, you want to make sure that, um, that you sink your screws down um, below the wood so that when you flip your bottom over, right, you don't gouge this out. So I'm working on a work table, right? I'm working on a work table, but you, you might not have uh, a workbench. You might be working at your, you know, your dining room table or, or something like that. Um, and if you're working at your dining room table and you have little screws sticking out the bottom, you're going to gouge your table all up, and that's just that's just crummy. Right? If you are working on a dining room table, uh, I always say take a washcloth. Go in your bathroom, get a washcloth. If, if you don't have a nice washcloth, just get a rag or put a t-shirt or something. You know, put something underneath this, right? And then when you put it down, um, it'll, it'll rotate around really nicely, right? Uh, when I'm sculpting, I'm gonna be sculpting on a model stand like this, um, and the model stand is um, you know, designed to move around, so I, I don't use that. But if I was sculpting at my house, which when, you know, when I was, uh, when I was a student, I didn't have a big studio. When I was a student, I sculpted at home, and that's how I learned that lesson, by scratching the table. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's talk about adding on the, uh, this piece of black pipe. So a couple of different things. So I, this is uh, a half inch flange, right? It screws on and off, right? a half inch flange. Right? This, is, this stuff is really rigid. You can see actually on my, my shelves on the back, those are, those are thicker pieces. You know, they, they, they look kind of cool. You'll see them in bars and stuff you know, all the time and whatnot, but they're really durable and it's, they're kind of like working with an erector set. Right? So you get, um, uh, um, I, you can tell I'm from New Haven, Connecticut because I just referenced erector, uh, erector sets. Um, but the, um, uh, they're, they're, they're modular, you know, or like, like building with Legos. So you get a system where you can kind of move things around. Uh, and you'll see in all kinds of different things, uh, like I don't know if you can see this over here, um, you know, using the pipe in different ways to get different heights and, and, and do different things. So this is a piece of half inch pipe, uh, a half inch flange. Uh, this one actually reduces this down. So this is half inch. This reduces down to three eighths inch, and then I have another reducer in there that reduces this down to a quarter. Now, why am I doing all of that? Because I like the part that actually goes into my sculpt to be as small as possible, right? So you could just have this piece going, like a piece this thick going in, but then you have this big, massive thing coming out of the side of your, you know. So you can see that if just this is going in. If just that is going into my skull, right? It's 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 only gonna be that small area. Whereas if that's going in, you got this big massive thing over there, right? So you know, so pick your uh, pick your pieces out wisely, right? So uh, I have right, this is a um, I believe this is a six inch section here, you know, this little piece here. This is a little six, this is six inches long, right? But plus this and this and this, right? That gives me about, from the edge, that gives me a solid seven inches of space. And what that means is that when I'm sculpting over here, I have all this room to move, right? If you get a little tiny short piece for this and you're putting that here, you, you can't get your hands in there. So it's all about, you know, making it so that this stands up and is way over here and is way out of the way, right? 
<clears throat> okay, so, uh, and then the height. So as I said, right, um, uh, the average shoulder height of a cheetah is about 26, uh, is, is 26 to 37 inches, right? Um, I put mine, uh, I decided that my cheetah was gonna be about 30, right, because it's kind of in the middle of that, which means that my cheetah is gonna stand up about 10 inches high. Now, I'm also though going to lean my cheetah over really far, right? So I'm gonna have my cheetah like way kind of leaning over. So that brings that 30 back down, right? So I came up with, but I'm also, as you can see, all right, just to go, I'm also going to put some amount of base at the bottom, right? So there's a lot of uncertainties in here in terms of how I'm figuring all this stuff out. So I came up with the number that I would have this be um, a little less than 10, right? Because um, I want it to be coming out of, you know, if we were sculpting just like this, I want it to be coming out here, right? So whenever we're trying to plan where our pipe comes out, whatever kind of piping, we always want to make it really... Um, in a place where you're, you're, you don't have a lot of stuff going on. So a, a lot of times you'll see um, it coming out of the back of the glute because on a, on a human because the back of the glute is just a big massive area. You don't want it to be out, coming out of a crease. So if, like, like I wouldn't want it coming out of the shoulder because I have a whole bunch of stuff going on here, right? I would want it coming out of this, this lap right here. Right? Down in here, um, uh, I might be able to show some of the, uh, the oblique muscles down here. So I'd prefer it to be coming out of this lat because the lat is going to be a big, smooth area. Right? And it's never going to be perfect. There's no, you know, there's no perfect, um, you know, every, every place it's going to be a little bit of an irritation and you're going to have to sculpt around it. A couple of things that I do uh, with this. When I put this section on, I want this to be tight but I don't want this to be overly tight, right? I want it to still be loose enough because what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, I'm gonna do everything as if I'm planning on casting it. So if, if I put a wooden block underneath, when, if I had this and it's right here and I make a mold and I'm casting it, or if I have this, I can unscrew this, I can slide this piece out, I can thread this off and drop this, this, this uh, flange off and then, I can unscrew all of this and pull it out. Right? So a lot of times on something like this, what I would do is I'd have the whole animal up here, I would make the mold on that side and that would lock that in place and then I would remove this, re-sculpt that, that section and make the mold on this other side. Right? Um, I'm only explaining that because that's, the, that's what goes through my head. Right? And so I'm, I'm sharing that with you. If that makes no sense to you and you don't understand mold making, don't worry about it. <laughs> but that's why you're going to see me put this on this. That's why you're going to see me make sure that this is still a little loose, right? Sometimes what you'll see is people just crank it down so tight. And then when you're trying to get this out, it ends up damaging your sculpt later on, all right? Okay. So like I said, um, I'm going to try to kind of shoot for... Oh, and then the other thing too is because this is all modular and because I can remove this, I can... I can have, like, my, my cheat is over here, and I decide that maybe I want to move him down. Now, one thing I could do is I could build my bottom up, and that's going to move him down. Or, but maybe I decide that, um, that, that she needs to go farther up, right? If that's the case, you can loosen all of this up, right? You can come over here, you can take this piece off, and you can add a larger piece of pipe, right? If you've watched my figure sculpting video, I think, I, I'm pretty sure that I changed the pipe height in that, um, in that video. I, I do it all the time, though. Uh, and so having that flexibility is, is nice. So I'm going to try to shoot for it coming kind of out of the lat. Um, because this guy's, the, the, you know, she's going to be leaned over like this, it'll be kind of coming out like that. All right, so that's what it'll be. Right? And because I'm looking at that, and that's a little bit, um, you know, it's, well, let's, let's measure. Right? So from the head, I want right there. I'm going to say right there. All right, so that's six inches. And then... It's about the middle of the body, but then I'm gonna have this long tail and probably come way off my board and remove that. So I'm gonna put it a little bit in the middle, but a little, just a smidgy bit farther forward. All right, so what do we got here? I got, this is an 18 inch board, so I got six and a half on that side. Eight. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right about there, all right? And I want my cheetah to kind of be in the middle. So, I, you know, she's gonna be coming down like this. So I'm gonna move this as far over to the edge as I can. All right, and if I have to, I can add something. Uh, if I had to, I could decide that because she's all raked over like this, um, that 
that maybe maybe I need it farther away. Actually, maybe what I should do is I should go like this, and that can give me the length, right? right? So my length of my cheetah I decided was gonna be uh, about 18 inches long, which is this ruler. So that gives me kind of the length that way. Right? So I can kind of maybe come up here like that, right? and that puts that, that lat would be here. And then that one paw that's gonna be way over is gonna be way over here. Right? So I'm gonna move that back a little bit down there, right? So that's kind of that thought process right there. That's where I'm gonna go, all right? I like that, I like that one too. Maybe I'm gonna stick it all in the corner as much as I can. Okay, so I'm, so I'm gonna call it right there, all right? Um, I do need to get a, a, a longer screw for this though, all right? I'll be right back. I am back, okay? So, you could, you could um, take the, this off and drive the, the bits down, but I don't like to do that. I like to always put them in with it on like this. And the reason is, is that if, if you put your, your screws straight down, a lot of the times you can't get the driver all the way over. So if I put them in at a slight angle, I know that I'll be able to get them out at this angle. Okay? So uh, for these, actually, I'm going to just use these inch and a quarter. Okay? So I'll put them in here. Let's get that kind of started. Okay? So see how I'm going at a little bit of an angle. To the wood, um, when you screw a, a screw into wood, if you go a little bit too far, it just sinks into the um, wood. When you're screwing in um, something metal to something wood, if you go too much with the driver, you will just simply break the screw, and and then you're going to be in a, you know, then then it kind of stinks because uh, now you have something that jammed in there and it's stuck. And you see on that, because these are all on an angle, I'll easily be able to get those out later. Okay, uh, now it's time to start. So still get that off, still get that off. Like I said, I'm going to put some gloves on. We want our cheetah to be about 17, 18 inches long. And, and, it, and it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's all going to change because, like I said, um, when I show you the, uh, the, the I, I, want, I, I want her to be, this part of her, her, her back to be kind of coming in. Because, you know, when you look at the, the, the run cycle, when they, they, they move like this and it comes in, right? So, uh, that's the, the great thing about an armature, you know, that's flexible like this, right? So I just have a general kind of idea that um, that I want it to be, uh, let's say, let's just call it 17. So I'm going to try to get 17 inches, right? And I decided that I wanted this to be sort of in the middle. So I have six here and five, six. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of want this to be So it's actually a little bit farther forward. So a little bit um, more uh, up this way. So that means I'll take my 16, and if I divide that in half, it would be eight, right? And then um, a little bit, so maybe I'll go nine inches out, and then, like this, uh, so six times four is 24, right? and then 24 divided by three is eight, so I'll go eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, because this one is about 11. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so about nine, right? 
<clears throat> some more. Okay, some more, a little bit more. Right. Now, just like the human, right? Just like the human. I'm doing this. I should show, make it so you guys can see this, right? This is giving something that's going to be our head. Right? Why am I curling it like this? The reason why I'm curling it like that is that if I want to, I can go in there and I can extend it and I can bring it back out. Right. So we want this to be about nine where it's coming out. So I'm going to hold that. Stab my glove already. Sorry if I'm grunting. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit because, um, like I said, I, I cut my hand pretty bad making the mold last week. I had to go to the emergency room. Posted pictures of it on, on uh, Instagram and whatnot. Um, but the uh, um, my my. My hand is in quite a bit of pain and I keep getting these sort of shooting pains. Uh -huh. Okay, so now, so this is, when I, when I do the humans, it's, it's, it's the head down to the leg, okay? So now I need to go back, right, approximately to where I want my leg to start from this point here. Right? That's about four inches back, so, um, We'll go four times four is 16, and then 16 divided by three is, uh, is five and a third. So we're gonna come back to about here and bend this. Right. Now remember, we do not want our armature, all right? We do not want our armature to be way back here. We want our armature to be here. Right, 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 right where that, uh, that femur is beginning. That's the greater trochanter. And we want to have flexibility to, to change this, okay? Right, so I'm just going to leave this that little bit of a bend there. Uh, I can actually go in and, and check that, uh, change that later. So the next one, the next one is going to be uh, our first arm piece. And again, we want it to start about here, right? And it's gonna go back here, right? So, um, I'm gonna send this piece through. Right? So I need to have enough length for my leg, and it's better to have tons of excess, right? You want tons of extra, okay? So I'll, I'll just make these extra long for now. Right? But I need at least, um, where, oh well, I said, um, I said I need at least the 10 inches, right? so you need at least the 10 inches, so that's extra right there. Right? That gives me tons of extra depth. Okay. I'll bring this one back up and around. Okay, I'm not knock over my cameras with this. I always, I'm always saying in class, you know, make sure you don't poke your fellow student in the eye when you're when you're doing this. But if you're if you have somebody helping you out with this or whatnot, make sure you don't poke them in the eye. Should probably be wearing uh, eye protection when doing this. Okay, so pulling this through there. It might seem all kind of wiggly and whatnot now, but right. okay. So this one is now going to become my second leg. Right, kind of, right, so see how they're kind of splaying out. It's the same as doing it for the human, except it's just. And maybe you could even just do the same thing. You know, but okay. First arm, second leg. The same way. Second arm, first leg. Okay. So I needed this, and then I need an additional kind of 10 inches. So I'm going to go a little bit further down to here, and I'm going to cut these two things right here. 
I do not need this much extra, and it's going to make my life a little bit kind of good. Okay. This is actually really, really important when you're making an armature, right? You want to go first arm becomes the second leg, the second arm becomes goes back and is, is tied to the first one. The reason why this is so important, right, the reason why this is so important is that if you don't do that, what ends up happening is when you when you move your when you move one arm, if you tie them together, you can make it so that you move one arm and the and, and the leg moves right, because they're tied together. So you just want to just get in that habit of doing that. Right. I think of doing this, I take my fingers like this, put them on here, and twist. So very good forearm workout. It's important that when you're twisting your wire together, that you don't, what you don't want, let me finish this a little time, say that again. Um, I got a little cut off here, right? What you don't want is to have one wire like this and then take another wire and wrap it around like this. Right. The reason why you don't want that, it means nothing up here. Right. The reason why you don't want that is when you get down to these skinny little paws down here, you will have to modify your armature. So if you twist them together like this, this is thinner than this is. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that, makes, that makes sense. So don't take one. That's why when I'm doing it, I'm doing that twisting motion. I'm trying to twist them together. Okay. Piece. Okay. okay, so following my pattern. Back up here. So this is now my first arm. Uh, my, my first arm is now going to go to my second leg. face. So you can, you know, I got this tiny little, no, I can't get it. All right, now, uh, as I, I, got, I have this little bit of extra here. Um, because the hindquarters are a little bit thicker, I'm gonna add a little bit more. So I'm gonna add one more wrap going about halfway down my, uh, my leg. Right? And I, I'm actually trying to wrap the wire into the, to keep it as thin as possible, but kind of build up the kind of thickness that I need. I'm gonna wrap it into the various 
sort of parts around, you know, like you follow the pattern as we're going here. Right. But I'm not going to go all the way down because, again, I have that, that ankle issue down there. Right. So I'll cut that off there. Here. You kind of get to a point where you can't sort of stick it through there anymore, and that's and that's fine. And this to here. You know, use the pliers to kind of hold that because I might want to hold it. Actually, I'm going to use my injured. sort of needed there. And we'll just kind of cross over here. And use this a little bit of extra to right. Right. you can see this is still moving around a little bit with the extra extra screw here. What I frequently do is I take an additional screw then, I'll use it on the back here so you can see, All right, and I just put this in and I screw right in there. That, that, that when the screw goes in there, it really kind of holds on to that. So now, right, now I got my cheetah kind of here. And I have this kind of idea that they're about 10 inches long. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, that was the other one. <laughs> about 18 inches long. All right, so there's to the tip of its head. Right, and its hip is going to kind of be about here. Right, I'll be able to put that like that. Right, and its other hip is going to be about here. Right, come down, something like that. Right, there's the other leg. Okay. Uh, its shoulder is going to be kind of up here, and it's going to kind of come up high. Okay. It's going to come down, and we'll, and we'll fix all of that. Okay. Right. And you really want this space here, right? Notice how I have all this space here. That's going to allow me to, to sink the hips down in here and to be able to sculpt in all of these areas. Right. You don't want you don't want to um, have your uh, your armature split way back here. You want to split way up here, right? So it's splitting up here, and that comes down this way, which allows the allows you to move the legs back and forth in and out like that. Okay. All right. So this one here, and down there. And there you have it. There is your uh, there is your armature for working with an with an animal. Mm -hmm. Nice and solid. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do out a little, uh, in the next video I'll do out a little bit more math uh, and um, uh, pose the uh, the armature a little bit more, and uh, then we'll start massing out the major forms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All this. Mm -hmm. See you then.